I used to do door-to-door -door sales. And I was working with another friend of mine. And door-to-door -door sales, I mean, it's punishing. It's cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> and I was a little boy knocking on the door. Hello, would you like to buy a nice working television set, no money down? No! Bam! They slammed the door in your face. And the friend of mine that was working with me, they slammed the door in his face, and I looked back, and he was going to the car. He said, I can't do this. And he sat down in the car, and he said, you go ahead, I'll be here when you get back. Now, he had a mother and father to take care of him. My mother was ill. I am adopted. I was hungry. I had to go on. I learned something about myself. That when you step into your fear, somebody said, it was Winston Churchill, he said that courage is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. <laughs> when you step into your fears and continue to push yourself to go on, something happens for you. It will enable you to transcend yourself. I went to the next door. You like to buy a nice work and tell, no, bam. Went to the next one, no, bam. After a while, I no longer took it personal. <laughs> and I began to play a game. I said, well, I know there's a yes out here somewhere. And I'm going to keep on until I find it. And I'm not going home until I do. And I continue to knock on doors. And then somebody eventually would say yes. And I said, are you sure? <laughs> and I would go in there and I would get the sale. When you, when you have something you want to do, if you don't develop the courage to do that which has been given you to do, and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people or trying to get their approval, what will happen is that you will lose your nerve. And other people will convince you that what you're doing doesn't have any value. And you'll give up on your dream. It's an interesting thing about life, I've also found, that if you don't have the courage to act, sometimes and particularly, if you have something special to do, life will move on you. I'd, if, 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 if it were not for life, I would still be a disc jockey. I didn't just leave voluntarily to go to the state legislature. I was fired. <laughs> I was working on a job. And I came home one day. I was married at the time. And I told my former wife. I said, that guy Bert I work for is stupid. She said, if he's so stupid, why does he sign you a paycheck? <laughs> now, you see why I divorced her, right? <laughs> I couldn't stand her. <laughs> that night, I could not sleep well. Here was a guy that was controlling my life. I was going through all kinds of changes because this man controlled my paycheck. And it was Carlisle who said, truth crushed to earth shall rise again. Winston Churchill said, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but at the end, there it is. And we know scripture that says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And the truth that I had to come to grips with, that I wasn't in charge of my destiny. The truth was that I wasn't giving all that I had. The truth was that there are some things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have the courage to act on those things. And the truth was that Bert Charles was a blessing to me. He made life so miserable for me, I had to start looking at my life differently. The next step is, that is you. That is you. That no one can do it for you but you. And even though you face disappointments, even though you will experience some setbacks, it goes with the territory. You must understand that. I remember I was playing a game with my nine-year-old son, John Leslie, and I beat him 10 straight games in a game called Connect Four. And finally, I said, John Leslie, I'm bored. I don't want to play you anymore. And I got up, and I said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. And repeat after me, please. Let's say to this together. It's not over until I win. John Leslie said, no, you can't go now, Dad. I said, why? He said, it's not over until I win. That was his attitude. 
We sat down and we played several other games. And finally, after the 11th game, John Leslie won and he got up and he yawned. And he said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. And I'm saying to you, what if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no or we have a meeting and no one shows up or somebody say you can count on me and they don't come through what if we have that kind of attitude the cause repossessed nobody believes in you you've lost again and again and again the lights are cut off but you're still looking at your dream reviewing it every day and say to yourself it's not over until i win Life will yield to you. Now here's the next step. Repeat after me, please. It's possible. I can live my dream. It's necessary. I work on myself. Surround myself with winners. Become creative. It's me. I've got to make it happen. It's not over until I win. Has everyone, anybody ever seen something for you that you didn't see it for yourself? I didn't see that for myself. Maybe that's why my favorite book says, eye is not seen, ear is not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. Because of what he saw in me, he inspired me. He gave me a vision of myself beyond my circumstances, beyond my mental conditioning, and beyond the job where I was, because I thought I was just a disc jockey. I love that. I master a microphone. You drop me in any city, I can master a microphone. I can turn a city upside down with a microphone. But... I had more in me than I was expressing, and I did not know it. And because of this encouragement, I became a community activist. Because of this encouragement, I started doing a talk show called Voice of the People. Because of this encouragement, when I got out of radio, I ran for the Ohio legislature, and I was elected. And because of this encouragement, I passed 14 bills my first term. Because of this encouragement, I was elected three times and became the chairman of the Human Resource Committee. Because of this encouragement, I became a public speaker. Because of this encouragement, I became an author. Because of this encouragement, I did a show for King World called The Les Brown Show, and they paid me $5 million, $2 million not to speak. Because of this encouragement, I produced specials for PBS, public television. They said, you couldn't do that. You don't have a college education. It's educational television. Because of his encouragement, I did so many things I had absolutely no idea that I could do. I encourage you to live full and to die empty. There's more in you right now than just working on a job where they pay you just enough to keep you from quitting and you work just hard enough to keep from getting fired. And when you make the decision and identify that key area of your life that you need to make a radical change, things will begin to open up for you. Now here's the other thing that's very important. Once you identify your goal, I want you to get, if possible, a visual picture of your goal. My major goal was to buy my mother a home. I got the picture of the home with a 12-foot swimming pool and a basketball court on a golf course. I bought that home for my mother. It cost just over $400,000, 10,000 square feet. I had a picture long before I had the money and the down payment to get it. My goal was to be known nationally and internationally as a speaker. I had that goal. I had a card that I had on one side, asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be opened. On the other side I had, I'm the world's number one orator. I produced that result in my life. I had a goal of becoming a talk show host. I used to watch Phil Donahue, and I put my picture on the screen of the television as I listened to the program. I visualized myself there, and I was called by King World Production, and I had my own talk show. Well, it was the highest rated, fastest canceled talk show in the history of television. Well, at least I had one. <laughs> it's called life. Now, here's something else. You will fail your way to success. Trust me on that. You can have a lot of failures, a lot of disappointments, but you will fail your way to success. Goethe says, that which does not kill you will make you stronger. See, 85% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. That's why you have to be of good courage. You have to have courage. When life knocks you down, I have a saying, try and land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. 
So once you look at and decide the goal that you want, you want to put some things, put a treasure board or a, a goal board and have pictures of the goal that you want to achieve so you can see it every day when you get up in the morning and the last thing at night. You're programming your subconscious mind where nine out of ten decisions that you make comes from there. But the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that some of you already know that it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. It was hard when just over three years ago in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, where I was operating my business and I fell on some hard times and I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming into the lobby and the security said, excuse me, Mr. Brown, can we see you for a moment? And I said, yes. And I walked up to the counter and he gave me an envelope. And he said, would you mind reading it here? And I opened the envelope, and the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. It's not a hotel. Please do not sleep in your office. And I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I just work long hours in creating my business. I'm an entrepreneur. And right now, things are bad for me. But they're not going to be this way always. And I just asked for the opportunity to continue to operate like I'm doing. I'm not trying to make this my home. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. And look at him. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs on the 21st floor. He sleeps on the floor. Him and two other dreamers up there. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people and I was facing financial difficulties in my own life. I was behind on my bills and my dreams and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal a rock from anybody. Why did this have to happen to me? It was very hard. And here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream, that one day I would have my own talk show. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot being here with you today in this dome in Atlanta. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded. But I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. toward your dreams.